I'm not going to say a bunch in this intro because this is going to be a pretty long video. Other than that, the inspiration for this came from a recent Yamcast episode where they briefly mentioned how you can basically get a motorcycle for every 10 horsepower pretty much. And so I thought, what if we made a video recommending the best motorcycles or the motorcycles that I would pick for every 10 horsepower? Obviously, these are just the bikes I would recommend to go for. And for me, the real basis is at each 10 horsepower, what are the bikes that really interest me? What are the bikes that I would find fun and that would be good all arounders for kind of everything? So these are the bikes I would pick. Also, we're just going to go from 10 to 200. So for a 200 horsepower bike, I'm including everything that's over 200 as well. I don't want to do all the, you know, I don't know, there isn't really bikes at every single 10 horsepower up until like the 300 horsepower Ninja H2R. So <laughs> yeah, just 200 and up is one bike. Anyways, let's jump in. Let's kick things off with the obvious choice for the 10 horsepower motorcycle, the 9.7 horsepower Honda Grom or Honda Monkey. You can take your pick here. Obviously, it's primarily a style preference, though some have actually reported that the Monkey has a slightly higher top speed, which is kind of surprising. Not sure really why that would be, but I will say this, if you're even somewhat tall, the Monkey might be a better option. When you're, say, like six feet tall, the Grom really pushes your knees up to the handlebars. You don't even have to be tall for that to happen because the seat just really forces you into that one spot, whereas the Monkey has that bench seat. And if you want to straighten your legs a bit, you can kind of move back to the back and sort of give yourself some more room. So yeah, for all of you guys out there craving a 10 horsepower motorcycle, this is definitely the best option. All right, at 20 horsepower, this one's pretty tough. Not too many motorcycles out there from major companies making 20 horsepower, but this one's a great option because it is a bit of a higher CC bike than it probably should be making 20 horsepower. But as we've seen with modern classics, bigger CCs means more torque. So these bikes are tuned to just be more rideable, not to have lots of horsepower. And in this case, I'm gonna recommend the Royal Enfield Classic 350, the new one that's coming out. Hopefully a bike that will be available worldwide, though we don't know as of right now. You can pick up an older 350 if you want that has a kickstart and some of those good things that really make it feel retro. But yeah, this new Royal Enfield Classic 350 makes exactly 20 horsepower and it's super cool looking. You've got that sort of great World War II look in this bike. And then it's also just, these bikes are very like almost industrial or sort of agricultural. They're very reliable. They're kind of like little tractors really. But yeah, with all these new Royal Enfields, these bikes are bound to be super reliable, just like little tanks, honestly. They're like old Hondas in that way. It seems like these bikes run forever. So if this is available where you're at, I think this would be a great option at the 20 horsepower range. Now this is tough. There really aren't a ton of motorcycles producing around 30 horsepower, but I think the closest and best option has to be the Honda Rebel 300. This is, in my opinion, the best bike in that power range for all around use. Now I haven't actually ridden this bike, but I did ride a similarly sized and you know similarly powered thumper when I did the MSF course, which was the Suzuki TU250, and I loved that bike. Thumpers can be a little vibey and sort of rattly and jerky, um, and that was true to some extent of that bike, but I've heard nothing but good things about the Rebel 300, and it's got that cool sort of classic cruiser look, but it still feels very modern. It's super affordable as well. This is definitely your best option for 30 horsepower. Okay, for this one, this was a bit of a no-brainer. The KTM Duke 390 makes just over 40 horsepower. I think it's like 44 horsepower. So I'm kind of cheating on this one, but this bike is dead reliable. It's a fun little bike. Here in Hawaii, you actually see these all the time. And a few months ago, me and my son were at the park and this guy got on his Duke 390 right by us and he was like, hey kid, watch this. And then he proceeded to do the lamest wheelie I've ever seen. But my son thought it was hilarious. And I actually talked to that guy a little bit after his wheelie and he said that this is the best bike he's had in a long time. He thought it was perfect for bopping around the North Shore where we live, you know, 30, 40 mile per hour sort of speeds. So yeah, if you're looking for something light and fun for just around town, this is one of the best bikes you can get. It's significantly better than most of its competitors in that sort of 400 cc range segment. All right, now we're getting into a segment where there's quite a few bikes available, but for me, if I'm being honest, the bike I'm gonna pick at 50 horsepower is the Royal Enfield Interceptor. It's just such a clean looking bike. It's not perfect by any means. There's things I certainly don't like about it, but it manages to do some of the things that Triumphs don't do with their modern classic range that I love. Namely, it doesn't look like such a thick bowl of oatmeal. It actually has most of the proportions of an actual 60s or 70s motorcycle. It's still too heavy in my opinion, 
but everything I've heard, and a lot of you guys have commented that you absolutely love your Royal Enfield Interceptor, and everybody who owns this bike loves it. And they're so affordable. Like, it's just such a no-brainer. I might just buy one at some point, honestly. It's got that great classic look and feel. It's got a lot of color options, and again, super affordable. This is, this is the bike to get at this price point and at this power level. Okay, so the Interceptor was actually slightly under 50 horsepower, and this one is slightly over 60 horsepower, but I've got to go with, in this sort of power range, the new Street Twin, ideally in that tan stone whatever color. You guys know if you've watched my videos that I've talked a little bit of smack about Triumph's modern classics. Much like the Interceptor, they're not perfect. You know, I don't think they are totally capturing the spirit of, of the old Triumphs, but they're still such cool bikes and so much more interesting than say like a Honda or a Suzuki, at least like their naked bikes. And now having ridden the 2017 Street Twin, I know that the new one would even be that much better. I'm really curious to ride a new one actually, as I didn't really love the ride-by-wire feel. So I don't know if that was really updated much from 2017 or if it feels, I don't know, more... I don't know if there's more feel to it now, but it didn't have a lot of feel to me. It was almost too smooth. I could tell a computer was basically doing the work for me when I got on the throttle, which not my favorite, but I like things a little more raw. Regardless though, the Street Twin is such a cool looking bike and I would totally ride one and own one. So for 70 horsepower, I want to say the MT-07, obviously that's the bike to get for most people, especially if you don't want to spend a ton of money and if you want a really fun, great, torquey street bike. And you can customize it too, but you guys know me, I'm much more interested in that classic look and feel, so I would have to go for a Moto Guzzi V7. Plus, I forgot to mention in my video on retro motorcycles that are under $10,000, I forgot to mention the Moto Guzzi V7, which is pretty sad. It's not like I didn't know about that bike. <laughs> I, I watched tons of videos about it, and I would love to ride one. I've never ridden one. But yeah, you know, the V7 is a true retro motorcycle with, you know, an actual uninterrupted sort of heritage. Unlike so many of the other retro bikes in this segment, and unlike most of these bikes, it actually has loads of character with that horizontal V-twin thingy throwing you to the left every time you rev it. Or I think it throws you to the left. Maybe it throws you to the right. I don't know. But yeah, I really want to check one of these out. I would love to ride one. In fact, I'll say this. If I'm going to buy a retro motorcycle new, it's going to be between this bike, the Street Twin, and another bike that I mentioned, or the Royal Enfield Interceptor, actually. But yeah, this bike's up there. If I rode it and really loved it, I would definitely consider one. Man, for 80 horsepower, I really want to say the new Touareg. Touareg? I don't know how to say that. I've heard that that's a fantastic little bike. Aprilia really has appeared to make a great all-arounder with that bike. It's light. It's pretty cool looking for an adventure bike. But since it's not released yet, and I want to look at bikes that are actually out in the wild that have dealer support, that's another factor, I think I'd probably go with the Triumph Trident, which is probably the hottest bike in this middleweight naked segment. The Trident leads in most categories. It's basically the first great competitor to the MT-07. It's a bit more powerful. It's got a bit more tech and... It's got that great smooth triple engine that Triumph has perfected. It's got a little bit of a retro aesthetic as well. The dash looks great. That just like that view from the cockpit is awesome. Yeah, it's it's a great looking bike. And from everything I've seen, it's, it's, it is a great bike all around. So I think I would have to go with the Trident. Okay, for 90 horsepower, this one's a bit out there, but I think I would go for the BMW R18. I know it's a big heavy cruiser and that's not really my style of bike, but it's just so cool looking. I remember when they released the prototype for this bike with like the reverse levers and stuff. Oh man, the, the prototype was way better looking than the one that came out, but it's still really cool. They didn't fail to deliver the best looking bike in this sort of cruiser segment. It's got that massive thick boxer engine. And after riding that soft tail, I feel like this bike might just be the kind of experience that I would actually like. That would be a little more up my alley. It's a little more refined, I think, than the Harley, like the big cruiser Harleys. But yeah, still probably too heavy for me, but I would definitely consider it at 90 horsepower. All right, for the beautiful 100 horsepower number, there's quite a few potential bikes, but for me, I think I would go with the Triumph Speed Twin, making just under 100 horsepower. I've said before that the Speed Twin really captures a bit more of the original Triumph spirit in their cutting weight, like it's actually lighter than even a Street Twin, and trying to actually make a powerful, light, quick, fun bike, and it's a bit more originally styled, you know? It's small, it's lightweight, at least somewhat lightweight, and it makes really good power. But it still is super torquey. So I think this bike really hits the sweet spot for me. I think the Speed Twin would be a no-brainer at 100 horsepower. It's a bit expensive. There's a lot of other bikes that make you know this much power. 
that you could get for way cheaper than a speed twin but it's such a cool looking bike and i've watched some reviews it's super refined it seems like the um overall fit and finish of it and like the little details are just beyond a lot of the other modern classics so all right, we're starting to get a bit sporty for me at 110 horsepower, but for this one, I think I would go with the Envy Agusta Brutale Rosso, or as I like to call it, the Baby Brutale. Mm, that sweet Envy Agusta ness that only comes from an Envy Agusta. And personally, I really go for the smaller versions of motorcycles. Like my motorcycle, for example, isn't a Bonneville. It's like the baby brother or baby sister, whichever you prefer, to the Bonneville. And this Brutale Rosso is essentially the same bike as the Brutale and the Drag Straight 100s that are a bit more powerful, but it's been tuned down and toned down. And though I haven't ridden these bikes, I'm going to assume... It's just a bit more street friendly, as I've heard these are pretty crazy bikes. But as far as the style goes for these naked street bikes, these MV800s are perfect, they're aggressive, but they're not like goofy looking the way some other bikes in this segment are, like KTMs. All right, on to 120 horsepower. Starting to get spicy here, but I've got to go with the Triumph Street Triple R, one of the best all-around sporty naked bikes that you can buy. This is a thoroughly refined platform from Triumph at this point. A triple, much like the Envy Agusta triples, but bigger in capacity and all-around just smoother. I've heard this engine literally runs on butter. That's actually in the specs on the website. You just pour butter into the gas tank and it's just mm, so smooth. The other bike in this horsepower range is the Indian FTR 1200. That is a very different bike and it makes its power much differently. Obviously, it's a big V twin and this is a triple, but I think I would still pick the Street Triple R as it's lighter, it's more versatile. I also really considered the XSR 900 that's coming out for 2022 and man, that seems like a really cool bike too, but I still think I would go for the Street Triple but barely. All right, this one is tough. There are not a lot of motorcycles or new motorcycles in this category that are, you know, at 130 horsepower. But for me, I actually found one and it's the Honda Goldwing. <laughs> okay, you probably don't believe me and I've never ridden one. I have seen one, but I've never ridden one. But for some reason, I kind of want to lug around on one of these things. And having talked to my parents, you know, they used to ride big Harleys and they had some friends who had a big old Goldwing and they said there's nothing like it. You know, a big Harley is like a couch going down the road, but they said that the Goldwing's really like a couch. Most reviewers find them surprisingly peppy for what they are, and I just feel like this is like riding a two-wheeled minivan down the road. And I actually love minivans. I love driving minivans. Also, I'm not going to lie, I couldn't find anything that produces 130 horsepower except this bike, so I guess it's the Honda Goldwing. If you guys know of any cool bikes that produce exactly or close to 130 horsepower, let me know. I mean, okay, there are some other bikes, but I didn't want to just have MV Agusta. Speaking of which, let's go back to Italy for a bit and look at the souped-up Dragster 800, the Dragster RR SES in yellow and black. I think that's the one I would go for. Putting out you guessed it, 140 horsepower, just slightly faster than a Goldwing. <laughs> so this for me is the quintessential crazy naked street bike that really, it's just a step down from this full-on nutty segment of street fighters, basically. But honestly, if you go all in and get the RR SCS version, it's producing 150 horsepower. It's basically a street fighter. I love the Dragster RR and RR SCS with the spoked wheels. It's just so contrasting in style to have a bike like this have spoked wheels, but I love it. And it sort of personifies the entire MV range right now. You've got motorcycles like the F3 and the Super Veloce with their sleek, curvy, beautiful lines, and even their uh, touring bike. They're graceful, sort of regal bikes. You know, they're almost timeless looking, especially the F3. Then you've got these crazy, muscly, naked bikes but then to have spoked wheels on one, I don't know, it just works for me, I like it. This bike, like the Brutale we talked about, comes standard with loads of tech and features that you would normally have to add on, things like a quick shifter, for example. Envy Agusta was actually the first motorcycle company to bring a quick shifter to their production bikes, and it shows their quick shifters are super refined, they're some of the best around. Anyways, this is the bike I would get at this horsepower level. Okay, you're probably catching on that I'm a bit of an MV Agusta simp, but yeah, at 150 horsepower, there's a few different options, but again, I would say that I would go with the MV Agusta F3. The other bikes here would be like the Street Fighter V2 that's coming out. I believe that makes around 150 horsepower, but the F3 is just so dang pretty. It's so much more classic looking than so many modern sport bikes. And if you guys haven't watched the National Geographic mini documentary on MV Agusta and on the making of this motorcycle, I'll link that below. That thing is fantastic. 
But yeah, the original F4 is actually kind of a dream bike for me. I would love to get one, but this is sort of the successor to that bike. It's a bit more approachable than the F4s, though honestly, it's a crazy motorcycle. Like it's a true sport bike. And I really wouldn't have any business riding one. Like I don't even know what I would do with it. I also don't think I'd like paying insurance for it. But yeah, it's pretty much a track bike, you know? I don't know. All right, on to 160 horsepower. And this one makes a little bit more than 160 horsepower. I've got to go with the Triumph Rocket. But for this one, it's not about the horsepower. It's about that crazy torque number. 163 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. For me, perspective is everything. In that recent soft tail that I rode produced 83 foot-pounds of torque. Literally, this produces double the torque, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Oh, and the Rocket actually weighs less than that soft tail that I rode which is amazing. So yeah, I've got to ride this thing. It's a lump for sure. Like it's a big old lump of a motorcycle, but I have sat on them and checked them out and it's a cool lump. 170 horsepower is tough. Hmm. So I think I would go with the Ducati Multistrada V4, not because it really speaks to me or I don't know. It's just considered such a great bike. And I have to say, though it is extremely large and wide and not really my style. In person, I did see one recently in the Ducati dealership in Portland, and it has a sort of commanding air about it. And it, it is really beautiful for an adventure bike. It's cool for sure. And it's just such a great bike all around from everything that I've heard. It's kind of sad that the only Ducati on this list, though, is the one Ducati I don't really care about. Hmm. Anyways, in the 180 horsepower range, I'm not going to lie, we're somewhat out of my range at this point. I would never buy a bike with this much power. But if I had to, I would go with the Speed Triple RS, not the RR. I have some thoughts on the RR, not going to say them here. But yeah, the RS is an absolute monster of a motorcycle capable of track days, street riding. It's probably faster than almost any sport bike you're going to run into. But again, it's got that triple from Triumph, which is so smooth. It's sort of in its own category. It is a street fighter for sure, but it doesn't have the same sort of bonkers character as some of the other motorcycles in this category. It doesn't produce over 200 horsepower, basically. It's almost like a refined, gentlemanly street fighter, but of course, it's got a wild side. Okay, this is kind of getting weird. Anyways, I did watch the unveil of this bike when they updated it, and I was kind of hooked when I watched that. I was like, dang, this bike is so cool. So if I were going to get a 180 horsepower bike, this is the bike I would get. For 190 horsepower, I guess I'm going to go for the Yamaha R1. I love the sound of it. I love that sweet inline four that just sounds so mean and aggressive. If you guys watch I'm K at all, the YouTuber, he has an R1M, I believe, which is essentially the same bike, though it does look a little different, has some more features. And man, sometimes I just watch his videos just to listen to that sweet inline four and how beefy it sounds. Obviously, the R1 is an incredible sport bike up there with the best in power and just overall aggressiveness. I personally like the look of the R1 also more than... For example, the recent generations of Ducati V4 Panigales. I don't like all the fins and stuff like that. I'll just say that. I think the R1 feels like a little bit sleeker and more old school. But yeah, definitely the bike I would buy at 190 horsepower. I would maybe buy an old F4 that produced 190 horsepower, like say an 08. I think an 08 Ambiguist F4 produced about this. But if, I, if I'm buying a new bike, which I am for all these, I'm going with the R1. All right, to end this video, I'm going to pick the bike that I would personally get for motorcycles producing 200 plus horsepower. So you've got Ducati super bikes, you've got Ducati street fighters, you've got things like the Ninja H2 and H2R. And for me personally, I would go with, you could probably guess it, the MV Gusta Brutale RR. Now don't get me wrong, this bike is a bit ridiculous. There's things I don't like about it. <laughs> the street fighter is arguably a better looking bike, but I personally like this crazy inline four a lot more than a V4. And that's where the Brutale shines. It's so fast, it's so revvy. And from a lot of the reviews I've watched, if you keep it like down in the RPMs, it's actually very rideable. You can ride it around town. You can ride it anywhere. And I mean, that's true for sure of the Street Fighters as well. But yeah, if I were getting any bike with 170 plus horsepower, this is probably the bike I would get. It's way too expensive. I'll never buy a bike that's that expensive. Maybe I'll pick up a used one in like 10 years. Anyways, these are my picks for motorcycles for every 10 horsepower. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you all are doing well. We'll see you in the next one. Ride safe.